Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So we've got some lathe work to do this week. We've got some rollers in out of a feed mill. Right, so these rollers are out of a machine like this. So the big hopper on the top, you put your grain in there and then it goes on the back of your tractor, PTO shaft, and then it, it squashes the grain up, like breaks the grain open so that it looks like that. So it, so yeah, it breaks the grain open and if you fed cattle whole grain, it just, they wouldn't be able to digest it, it'd go straight through them. So you have to break it up like that and then they can digest it then. But the trouble with these now, they're that worn, it's letting whole grains through. So they're having to feed the cattle a lot more grain and because they're not digesting it, it's just passing through them. The grain that gets through here is not getting digested. So yeah, these are supposed to be smooth. You can see on the end what it's supposed to look like, it's smooth. And then with a bit of a groove milled into it to, to sort of grab hold of the grain and pull it into the rollers. But yeah, you can see how worn they are. It's funny how they've worn, like they've worn in ridges. The grain must go through in the same place every time. And it's also, you can see it's worn the, the groove even though it's worn past the depth of the groove, it's still see where the grooves were. So what I need to do first is take the frame off, take that pulley off the end. I don't necessarily need to take this bearing off, but the customers tried to take it off and they couldn't pull it off with their pullers. So I'll take it off anyway, and then if they want to put a new bearing on, they can do. So yeah, first job, tie that bearing off, get everything stripped off it so they're just down to the rollers themselves. Then we'll put them in the lathe and skim them. So hopefully I can get them bearing pullers on there and pull that bearing off. They're on like a taper, tapered sleeve on the inside of the bearing and you tighten the nut up and it pulls, uh, pushes the bearing onto the taper and then nips up onto the shaft. Right, so that's that bearing pulled off. And then there's, a, there's like a fibre seal and a plate behind it. <coughs> so yeah, there's a nice centre in there to use to when I put it in the lathe. So this end, I could probably nearly hold it by that in the lathe, 
but I don't know how true that runs with the rest of the roller. You'd think it'd run pretty true, but I think I might try and take it off. So there was there was two bolts in there. Yeah, there was two of them. You can see where it's been drilled into the shaft. I can't see any keyway or anything on it. But the only thing is I can't pull it off of the pullers because I'd just be pulling against itself. So, yeah, I might warm that up and see. There ain't really any, anywhere I can get into whack it either. I might have, if I get two levers in the back of it. Right, so we're nearly off. It's been a bit awkward. Uh, I can sort of get into whack on the back of there now. Before I was just starting to gently tap around there, but I didn't want to whack that too hard and break a bit of the pulley off. So, yeah, surely there can't be much more. So that's that off. I was on quite a way was that. I didn't expect it to be on as far as that. So I probably didn't need to take it off, but while it's off, I might as well take this bearing off as well and then put new bearings on it while it's all in bits. Yeah, and that's the bit I've just knocked off. So in this book, it does show the drawings of the rollers, but it's it's not very descriptive on how it fits together. Just more of a parts list. So these bearing housings have a plate that's like a seal in there and they've been centre punched in. So I'll have to go around there and nick all them centre punch marks off and get that out. And then I can undo the nut for the, like the collar that holds the bearing on. Same as what was on the other side. The other side had already had this housing taken off but they couldn't get the bearing off. So we'll take that out and we'll see if we can get this off with the bearing still in it. I don't know, we might just pull it off, but we'll see what happens.
So we've got that off and some grease cleaned out. It's actually loose is that nut. There's a locking tab there. So we'll bend that locking tab out of the way and then undo that nut a bit. Right, so I've got that bearing pulled off there now, so that's both them bearings off. I'm going to leave that one for now, and we'll sort this one. So I've just had the horrible realisation that I can't actually fit this in my lathe, which is the right balls up. I wouldn't have said I could do the job if, if I had known it wouldn't have fit in my lathe. So I thought, looking at my lathe, I thought, oh yeah, there'll be loads of clearance, but then I didn't realise that it's the clearance between the tailstock and here that's important. So I'm not a machinist, so it's not something I have to think about very often. When you wind that back to there and then measure from there to there is only like 125 mil. When you measure on the roller, sort of from the center down there, we're sort of 150 mil, 145 mil. So yeah, that's not gonna fit. Now, it'd be easy enough to find someone with a lathe big enough to do it, but probably not this week because, you know, everyone with a lathe is busy. Um, and my plan was to get these rollers back to them this week because they sort of need to get the mill back up and running again so they can feed the cattle without having to borrow one. So I need to think of a plan B if I can. So I don't know whether this will work or not, but I thought it may be worth a try. So if I took the tail, st tail stock off the lathe and sat it onto the milling machine, and then use the dividing head, but I'll have to make some spaces to go underneath it. Space the dividing head up to the same height as the tailstock. And then the tailstock will hold one end of the roller. The chuck will hold the other end of the roller in the chuck. And then use a milling machine, a bit like a lathe, so have the milling machine spinning obviously, and then turn the roller around with the dividing head and then skim the roller with the mill. Whether that'll work or not, I can't see why it wouldn't. I can't think of any other way of doing it really. But then it's not gonna be that easy getting the tailstock to line up with the dividing head. So yeah, it's a bit to think about. If I was gonna do that, I'd need to space the dividing head roughly 77 mil higher than what it is now. So I was thinking if I cut out two bits of plate like that out of 40 mil, which will make 80 mil, and then I can mill that down to sort of the right height, and then the dividing head will sit on there like it would do onto the bed of the mill. And then I can either clamp that down round the outside or use the, the slots in it to clamp that down, and then that would get me dividing head to the right height to match the tailstock. So I have some off-cut bits of 40 mil plate that I can use to cut them out of. No real great expense to me, just a bit of time cutting them out. So yeah, I think I might do that. I've got some 40 mil plate on there now. Should be enough to get them both out of that. I'm nearly out of oxygen on that bottle though, so hopefully I'll have enough.
So that's the first one cut out, so we're set up now for the second one. I had to move it a little bit because of where that is. Right, so we're about out of oxygen, so I've stopped it before it starts not cutting properly. It was dropping down to five bar, it should be at seven and a half. So I'll have to go and change that bottle. Right, so I've got some more oxygen now, so we're good to go again. I'll light it up where we left off. Right, so that's them cut out and tacked together. Bottom one's still hot because, well, I did that one last night and then this one I did this morning after I got some more gas. So they're lined up with them slots. They're, they're offset for a reason because of how the dividing head sits onto it. And then I did a hole through the middle. The hole in the bottom plate is bigger than the hole on the top plate. So when I mill it flat, I can fasten it down by the middle. Yeah, so I'll get that welded round now. And then uh, throw it in a milling machine and then we'll have to mill it to the right thickness.
Right, so I've got that welded round. So while that's cooling down, I've been setting the mill up. So I've got the tailstock off the lathe sat on here, and then I've been measuring from here to the centre of there. So, so I've measured it best I can like that, which gives me well, it was two hundred and three millimetres, or two hundred point three millimetres. I've done the same with this end. I've trued that up with a dial gauge and then measured from there to there and that gives me one, two, three millimetres. And if I take one, two, three away from 200.3, that gives me 77.3. So that's how thick that block needs to be that I've just welded together. Bring that block over, sit it on here, then we'll mill one side to get it flat, we'll turn it over and then mill it down to final size. Right, so that's fastened down, bolt in the middle. That's why I did one hole bigger than the other and then I could put a bolt through with the washer on. And then I've got a stop there and a stop there, so that shouldn't move. So yeah, we'll just, we'll mill that flat now, just enough to flatten it off for 130 RPM and three and a half inches per minute feed. So let's see how that goes.
Right, so that's that machined off. I sped the RPM up to 150 RPM. I got a little bit better cut finish. It's not fantastic, but it's, it's all right for what it needs to be. And then it measures 77.3, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's good. So uh, these slots, I might have to mill these wider because on the bottom of the bottom of here, there's some little blocks. Now you can see that sit into into there because I don't know if they'll be wide enough. You know, they're only roughly flame cut, so I might have to just mill them out a little bit. I'm not going to bother with them on the bottom, but I'll just do the top ones. I noticed for some reason it it wanders a little bit on the Z axis, even when it's locked in on there. So where there's a little bit of wear in, in that, and then when it goes, you know, whether it's moving a little bit like that, I don't know. Right, so that's them milled out to 16 mil now. So sort of eight mil deep should be enough. Luckily, when I was more luck than management, they actually lined up with the bed. When I sat it on, I just sort of sat it on. I didn't line them up. Anyway, they lined up pretty well. So it's technically cut at both sides of the slot. So that's worked out well. So I'll sit that on there now. Sit that on there and see if it fits. It should do. The only thing is it's the wrong way around. The wide side is at the side where the handle is so it's a shame really because if i had thought maybe a bit more about it i should have done that over here and then i wouldn't have had to have unbolted it and moved it and then lined it back up again i could have just sat that straight onto there and then it would have been in line with the bed but anyway it's too far you know it needs to be further down here and it needs to be the other way around nearly fits, I think I just need to go a bit further into the middle with my slots because they've got like square ends on them of the blocks that have to fit into the slot. Yeah, that's better. That fits down properly on there now. So yeah, I need to spin this round now, get lined back up again, and bring the roller across, and then you know fasten the tailstock down somehow, and line that up. Hopefully, yeah, the centre of that should now line up with the centre of that. Right, so that's pushed up to there now, and there about 
bang on. It'll zoom in if it will focus. Near enough for, for this job anyway, I'm not making parts for spaceships. So yeah, that'll do. So obviously I'm not going to have that in there when I'm the, the end of the shaft will be clamped into the vise, into the chuck. But I've just got in there now to so I can see if it's going to line up or not. I'll get that fastened down properly now and then fasten that down and then we'll go from there. So I've got the tailstock clamped down on each corner and I've measured from there and there to make sure that's parallel over there. Maybe near enough for this anyway. Um, then I measured, I put a square on here, measured from that, and then I then measured from the bottom of the square to here. These are my measurements. And then taken half the diameter off to work out where the centre of that is. And then did the same at this end, measured the diameter of that, put a square on there, and then measured that distance. And we get the same measurement there and, and that end. So I'm happy that that is sort of parallel with that or same distance from there anyway. And I put a, this is an old PTO shaft out of a Grey Fergie tractor, I think. It's got a centre in one end and then held it in the chuck there. And then I've run the dial gauge up and down here and it's sort of within 0.1 of a millimetre of the distance of that. I've turned the face converter off now so I can't move it up and down but I think that'll be near enough for that as well. So yeah, we'll get this lifted across and then we'll get that set up and uh, see whether it's going to do it properly. Right, so that's in then. I've run dial gauge around there and it's near enough true. Uh, yeah, no idea how this is going to go. We're going to find out. Right, so now looking at it, obviously that cut is not going to work because it's only cutting there and there. And uh, these ones obviously are not going to do anything. So I need a cutter that cuts all the way into the middle. I never really thought about that until now, but yeah, it makes sense now I'm looking at it. The only one I've got that cuts all the way to the middle is that one. But it's only 40 mil, so it's, it's going to have to be, you know, it's going to take a while doing it with that.
Right, so I've been around there twice. I don't really know what to make of that. It's not doing too bad a job. It's just, it seems like there's a lot of backlash in this. And it's, it's making the whole drum, making, making the whole roller sort of chatter backwards and forwards. It's not done too bad a job. I can't feel where the overlap is anyway. So I don't know whether to carry on with that or whether to find someone with a bigger lathe. I think you need to do 17 and a half runs to cover it all. It doesn't take too long to do a run. But yeah, I'm not sure. I might go down to this end, do a run at this end and see if I'm taking enough off. And then come back to come back to there. So obviously it would be a lot better in a lathe, but I'm just trying to make do with what I've got. Right, so I did run around that end, um, we're not quite deep enough, so I come back to this end, I've done another run, run around there, and you can see, you know, when a fair bit off, been deep enough. So I'm not going to do any more in the mill because it's going to take me ages. If I take a bit more off and then I get to the middle and realise I'm not deep enough in the middle, then I'm going to have to go back and do the whole thing all over again. Where if, in a lathe, if you're not deep enough in the middle, you just, you know, all you've got to do is one more pass across it, where this I've got to do, you know, another all pass all the way around on every one again. So it's just going to take too long. And you can see the backlash. I don't know if I can hold it steady enough. But there's a little bit of backlash in that, which sort of making it chatter. I can use this setup when I cut the, you know, the, the lines that are in it all the way across. So I can use this setup for that, so it's not been a waste of time. Plus, I can use that spacer for other jobs. Now I know that it, you know, it matches up with the tailstock, so it's it's not been a waste of time. It's just not going as well as what I was hoped it would have done. I mean, I could do it with this if I had no other option, but. I think my best option is to see if someone else can do it in a lathe or see if I can use someone else's lathe. So yeah, that's put getting a bigger lathe further up on the shopping list. Right, so I've spoken to three separate companies or three, dif three different people. Um, one of them's too busy, they can't do it until a week after next. The other one's on holiday and the third one can't do it. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to persist doing it like I'm doing it. So I've spent 
a load of time this morning filling it up with coolant to get the coolant pump working but then as soon as you turn it on it trips the electric off so I spent two hours fiddling about with that and it still it just trips the electric off so yeah I'm gonna have to persist with no coolant but I'll just spray it in this little spray bottle which is annoying when I bought it he said the coolant pump works but it doesn't or it doesn't now anyway so back to the beginning again I'll go another half a mil deeper and then that should be enough hopefully that will clear the whole thing yeah I don't think it matters if there's a few marks left in it but you want it a bit better than that so yeah we'll just have to carry on like I am Right, so I've done how many passes have I done now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven passes. It's, it takes about five minutes per pass, but it's just it's just very chattery and it's not very fun. But anyway, I found one of my friends. Well, I forgot about I forgot my friend had a lathe. So my friend Angus has a lathe that's big enough to fit this in, and the other one. So yeah, I'm gonna take this out now, take it down to Angus's, and then use his lathe and turn it down. Be a lot easier. I'll have to take this one in bits, get the bearings off the end of this one. There's a pulley on the end there, which is tape a lock pulley, so that should be nice and easy to get off. Take this framework off, and then, yeah, take both bear take both rollers down, and put them in his lathe.
So that's pulley off. So if you haven't seen one of these before, these are like a taper lock. So there's a taper on there, and then there's the opposite taper on the on the inside of the pulley. And there's two grub screws, and half the hole is threaded. So you bind them in there, and then it, it pushes the taper tighter into that taper and nips it onto the shaft. And then to get it off, you take the grub screws out, and then this is the other way around. Half the hole is threaded on there. So then that works the opposite way around but sometimes you can't get enough on there so you have to give them a whack as well and then it it knocks the pulley off the taper there's a keyway on the shaft as well All right, that's both housings off now. So I'm gonna leave the bearings on for now. I just wanna get the machining done first and then worry about the bearings afterwards. So I'll get them loaded up and then we'll take them down and get them machined. A little Corsa van certainly knows about having them in the back. It'd only be the same as two big fat blokes. That's my theory anyway. So I've got this lathe to use. So this is an XL lathe, I think. It's pretty nice. Just wants a bit of a clean, but yeah, it's a nice lathe. And it's got a, like a crane over the top of it, so I can lift it up with that nice and easy. Set it in. And there's enough clearance for me to to me machine it, so that should make it easier.
I've got it mounted in there now. Um, I've touched off on there and then gone half a mil more. So see how it goes on that bit. It might have to go a little bit less. We've got 80 RPM and then I'm not quite sure what feed rate we're at. I'll have a fiddle about. Just say on there, but it takes a bit of working out. Alright, so that's that all cleaned up. There's a little bit there, I must have had a stone through it or something. So that'll have to be alright. Yeah, it's all down to one consistent size now. So, the bit of burr on the end, I'll take that burr off. And then I'll change the tool onto this one and put a bit of a chamfer on either end. Right, so that's that one done. So I'll have this one lifted out, get the other one put in and do that.
Right, so I've done the first cut. You can see at this end, it's not very nice. It's, uh, it's worse than the other one. So I'll have to do another cut to try and get rid of them. stringy was that I couldn't get it to break a chip very well so it's real stringy stuff that came off that one but it's all nice and smooth again now we've got rid of all the dimples and it measures 285.7 uh, where that one measures 285.9 so you know this one's 0.2 a millimeter smaller but like I said I don't think that'll make a difference so yeah that's that done that was a lot easier than it was on the mini machine still took quite a bit of time but a lot easier so yeah, we'll lift that one out again now. It's all going on down here. Right, so that's them back unloaded. A little cost of I knew about them in the back, but I won't go in far, I was only going a few miles. So yeah, that's them done. I spoke to the customer and he said not to worry about the the lines that go across them. Um he said if need be they can do that with the grinder, just grind some lines across. So if I did it with a milling machine, because I'm like starting there and they go across at an angle and finishing sort of there but the other end it'd be sort of shallow at one end, deeper in the middle as you're going up the up the like diameter and then shallow again at the other end. So yeah, not gonna bother with them. So the customer is gonna sort the bearings out. He said to leave them on. I said, did you want to take them off or leave them on? He said to leave them on. So I'm taking them off, but they can put them back on again. Depend, they're gonna check them and see whether decide whether they're going to put new ones on or not. It makes sense to put new ones on while it's all in bits, but I can imagine them bearings would be quite expensive. So, yeah, I won't charge the customer the time I've spent trying to mill it down on the mill. It was sort of a bit of experience for me, a bit of an experiment as well. But I've made that, so that'll be coming useful for the future. So it wasn't a waste of time for me because I've got that and yeah, I won't charge a customer for, for that time that I spent machining it. So yeah, that's that job done. So yeah, I'm on the lookout for a bigger lathe now. That's, my lathe is a Harrison M400. So whether I look for an M Harrison M500 or an XL like that one I was using down at Angus's. Um, yeah, it's definitely high up on the shopping list is a new or a bigger lathe.
Right, while you're here, does anyone know anything about like off-grid three-phase power supplies? So at the moment, well, I have, we have split-phase mains electric, which is like two single phases. And you can run them together to get 480 volts. And then I use a phase converter from the split phase to convert it to three phase, which is great. That runs everything I need to run, but you can't run like your plasma cutter or your welder off of a phase converter, which then that limits me to what welders and what plasma cutters I can have because there's only sort of tech arc that will make you a plasma or a welder to run on split phase. And I don't want to be running a generator. Like sometimes on my CNC table, I'll only be using it for 10 minutes at a time, cutting the part out. So I don't want to be running a generator just for 10 minutes and then turning it off again. So I was either thinking solar panels and a battery, like a battery pack, or solar panels and a generator to give me like an off-grid three-phase power supply. So, you know, I don't know much about it. So if anyone knows anything about that, um, let me know. That'd be good. be good to hear from people that are in the know. I keep getting emails about these, so I've got some more stealing today, so I'm going to cut some more of these out, so keep an eye on snowballengineering.co.uk if you want one. Also, there's other merch available. But anyway, that's all for this week, so hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.